the world's major civilizations have records of football games in their early history, but it would surprise most that in the world's most populous country, there's evidence of a glorious tradition of football that stretches back to the ancient civilizations of 5,000 years ago. According to research, the stirrings of Chinese football began in the time of the Yellow Emperor. Although no tangible evidence survives of football in that period, there's a very detailed picture in later dynasties which revealed to us that the ancient game initially developed in three distinct forms. The first and oldest was a performing solo style consisting of difficult tricks and skills. The second was played with two teams on a field and a goal in the middle. The third had two teams and six nets either side of the field. This was probably the most similar to the modern game. These manuscripts were printed in the 15th century in the Ming Dynasty, but there is evidence from a much earlier period. During the Han Dynasty 2,000 years ago, the heart of Chinese civilization was in central China in what is now Hunan province. In the local museum of the provincial city of Nanyang, there are reliefs taken from tombs in the surrounding countryside which depict Han warriors playing football. In a nearby tomb, there's evidence of these reliefs in situ, recently discovered, and still in the process of crude repair. A Hun footballer, 2,000 years old. But the history is even more relevant in a simple building 200 miles away. Here, a column dated 83 BC depicts the life of Ju Chong, a magistrate of the Han Dynasty, who was proud of his footballing skills, thereby registering his name as the world's first identifiable footballer. There are 12 teams in the Marlboro League, China's first professional football league, from Jilin in the north to Guangzhou in the south. Three teams play in Liaoning, the northern province that has traditionally been China's football powerhouse. The Liaoning club, representing the whole province, are China's top team, champions for the last 10 years, and the only Chinese club to be crowned Asian champions. But coach Yang Yimin is finding 1994 altogether more difficult. The triumphant squad has grown all together. Some have failed to pass the big fitness test, and Liaoning have looked vulnerable. Week two, Liaoning in the blue shirts unexpectedly lost away to Shandong. The champions won only once in their first seven games. The crowd at home in Shenyang were amazed and the players frustrated. After 11 weeks, Beijing are in fourth place, four points behind leaders Dalian. Guangdong are disappointedly held at home by Shenyang in week 11 with only five points covering the top nine places, a win could easily see them move back into contention. A little bit of drizzle has kept uh, many of the spectators away, caused a few of them, they're not sunbathing, they're <laughs> everything's pretty well wet, but uh, I tell you, they're, they're better off there than uh, had the match been played in Guangdong, where torrential rain has uh, flooded the southern part of China, and including Hong Kong, and I guarantee the match would not even be underway. The second half of this Marlborough Chinese Pro League gets underway. Uh, the two teams there, Beijing, are in the red strip going from left to right, uh, Guangdong in the blue. These two teams met uh, in the pre-break period, and Beijing won 2-0 away in Guangdong. So uh, obviously the momentum, you would think, slightly in favour of the home side just on their previous result, but uh, the Home crowd will obviously help Beijing. Early uh, offside decision. And uh, Tony Seeley, one thing we can say about the two sides, Beijing have found goals a lot uh, easier to come by. They've got three players that have notched up four, uh, four goals. Yi Yuxin is one of them, the number seven there, whereas uh, Guangdong struggling just 13 goals in total. 
Yeah, I think it's a, it's a problem that the, the Asians do have and we've noticed all around, uh, even from the World Cup games, that we saw that they do get a bit excited in front of goal. But an interesting t statistic there that... Um, Four goals from four different, uh, three different players. That's good play because um, it means that if somebody's not um, firing, in, firing in the goals or somebody's having a bit of lack of form, there's always somebody else chipping in. Certainly, and uh, Guangdong now up pressing the uh, Beijing area. Lee with a throw, bit of an old-fashioned throw in there, but uh, good handling by the keeper. Lee Chenggong and uh, quickly released his uh, forward players. Guangdong liked to play quickly. They had a, a poor start to the season, had uh, three quick defeats in a row, and uh, that caused the management to take things under control. They've taken on the board three overseas players, uh, only one of them on the field today, Murray Jones, the number 18, uh, Zi Yushin, the number 23, Uh, one of them, Darren Tilly, is uh, currently back in the UK for what is described as personal reasons, whatever they may be. And uh, Craig Allardyce has picked up two yellow cards and uh, pretty much in keeping with the World Cup, I suppose. Uh, here's a man serving a suspension. But uh, this is good play again from Guangdong. And a difficult ball hit, and they've scored! Only the second minute of play. And Guangdong, and listen to the jeers. Well, that was uh, Ling Zhixing, or Ling Zhanjun, rather. What a fantastic goal there, Brian. Totally out of the blue, ball coming across the box. We'll have a look on the replay. He gets it whipped in from the right, and he just throws his foot out, and it goes flying in there. Keeper's got absolutely no chance. Fantastic start. Well, it certainly was, and uh, the player there out on the right saw that what was on, two players in the box, but a first-time touch, and fired in the top right-hand corner. Well, they're going to have their hands full now, Beijing. Well, what a great start for the away side. And nice to see a goal so early on in the game. Well, we were talking about the lack of goal scorers. Well, that man, uh, Liang Zhenjung, needed just one touch and I dare say that was his first touch of the game. Yeah, it looked like it, Brian. I don't, I don't think they'll get a better start uh, than they're having. Uh, there's another incident here, just whipping it away there. Good defending in the end from Beijing. From Guangdong, sorry. Well, this is uh, great end-to-end -end stuff. Such a lively start there. The ball all, every, leaves everybody there, and he's just unable to get his foot to it there, the little number seven. The Beijing coming straight back into it. Well, some uh, disagreement over on the far touch line, but uh, hopeless shot there from Zhao. We were able to grab our breath there. So much happening in the first five minutes there that um, both uh, teams looking for that goal and uh, obviously Guangdong getting the early strike, which will give them tremendous confidence if they have been having problems getting the goals. Yeah, not a very uh, happy face on the Beijing bench. Tong Peng Jun, the manager. But this is a very even league at the moment. Uh, you mentioned at the top of the programme that Dalian were the league leaders by two points. Shanghai behind them, Sichuan. And in fact, four points cover the teams in the second position down to the ninth. So really, it's still very much uh, an even contest. Nice play, good into pass again. And a high blast over. Yeah, just unable to keep it under control there. Coming through. Looking up there, we see here, knocks it inside. Just takes it past the first defender, looks up, but just unable to keep it under under uh, under the bar there. But a, a terrific effort again. Guangdong coming forward at, uh, at every opportunity, not afraid to sit back on that early goal. And a nice bit of interplay there. The uh, number 11 just laying it off nicely for the man coming through at pace. I wonder if they've learnt much from the World Cup because they had a break and uh, we're now back down to the real business, the uh, bread and butter stuff. And you'll see Gao Fang there with his left wrist heavily strapped. He actually got uh, an, uh, seven stitches in a wound. He, he slipped in the uh, team dormitory. And uh, he has stitches, but he's fit to play and they'll need him. So he's one of the three players that have notched up 
four goals. And, of course, the Chinese international, probably their most uh, famous player. Well, I don't know whether the, um, the players have been watching the World Cup were copying them, smashing the balls over the bar, but already we're seeing a number of shots, long-range efforts already, but uh, unfortunately none on target yet. But uh, encouraging signs all round. Yeah, it's good to see them shooting from distance, but uh, the one thing, when the ground's a little bit slippy as it is, as I say, there has been drizzle uh, this afternoon in Beijing. A ball that skids along the surface, of course, much more use than uh, one that's lifted. Of course, one that's lifted over the bars, absolutely no use whatsoever. <laughs> but, uh, absolutely. <laughs> the old coach Emmanuel coming out there to good effect from Brian. Well, it, it's, it's, one, it's a factor that, uh, for some reason or other, has bedeviled the, uh, the teams from Asia. I remember Korea, who've been so long the flag bearers of Asian soccer. When they were in the, uh, the Olympics, they, the statisticians were on them. They had something like 28 shots at goal, and uh, 24 of them went over the bar. Incredible. Going to have to work a lot more on that. But it's uh, basic technique. Well, this is uh, Garfang. He's easily to uh, pick up the man with the bandaged wrist. Ball angled in and uh, easy work for Wu Chuliang in the Beijing goal. Number 23, Ji Yuxin coming away. Good burst, a good bit of pace down the middle. And uh, I don't know whether you fancy playing in front of these home, <laughs> home fans, anything like that. But, uh, the opposition managed to put on and see where the number 23 had got to. Zhi Yuxin followed his run right through out to the right wing. And uh, you get the impression that the Beijing fans expect the very best from their side. And the jeers that accompanied the uh, midfield defence, allowing that uh, fine run from Zhi Yuxin to continue. Of course, the Workers' Stadium is the, the big stadium in Beijing. Uh, and uh, here's Garfang. Squares it back all the way across the goal, but uh, it is cleared. Good pressure again there. Good pressure there. Pushing for this equaliser. Looking for the errors, but uh, Guangdong there. Defending very well, getting the numbers behind the ball. There's a break on here. Looks like uh, Murray. Murray Jones. He was trying to curl that out towards the left, um, the left flank. This is Zhao Ning on a run. Goes sliding in. And always tricky with these slippery conditions. It's, very, it's a very fine line between dangerous play and uh, player saying he's going for the ball. The, the, you saw two sliding challenges going in there with the player going in with his feet up, studs showing. Well, so far, the referee seems to have got the uh, few of the incidents right. Well, that one was low, but straight into the wall and uh, rebounds. Another one of those uh, challenges. Yue Tang, and uh, all the way back in defence is Zi Cha Yang. Well, the Beijing back line looking for some move. Now look how, how deep the back three have stood there. Again, something in the World Cup, you'd have seen the back line pushing up and the play being made from there rather than from a midfield player static inside his own half. Well, the problem that Beijing have got, obviously, is giving away the early goal, but uh, nevertheless, the, the Guangdong side have set themselves out with a very, very strong uh, back five there. And also the midfield, uh, are not conceding anything, they're allowing Beijing to have the ball up to the halfway line. Well, that was Li Sheng getting in a fairly uh, hefty reminder of the presence of the number 17, Han Zhu. Second corner of the game for Beijing. That one uh, hit deep, curling in. And a little bit of indecision there, but it's all worked out quite nicely for Beijing as Jian Bing sit in. 
Uh, some fairly uh, head up and eyes closed sort of defending there. Great shot, what a save! Terrific reflex save from the keeper, Yu Chu Liang. There's real quality here. He's just snapped into it there, and the keeper couldn't have seen much of it, and he got down there like lightning, and that was a fantastic save. Good quality strike there, Tony, as well, because uh, we've just been saying, you know, those sort of snapshots time and time again with a little lack of quality, a little lack of technique, it's so easy to miss Q. That's right. Well, the shots, uh, the long distance shots seem to be uh, causing the players a problem, but the, the little 18 yard uh, little snapshots around the 18 yard box have uh, all been on target, and obviously, one done have got one goal to the good. Smart play from the Beijing events. The linesman uh, looked to be a little bit in two minds. Murray Jones trying to uh, persuade him to give a corner. I wonder if they're playing with a new FIFA ball. It was introduced <laughs> at the World Cup, swerving around a bit. The swerving ball, yeah. That, uh, I don't know if it was uh, so much the swerving ball as some bad goalkeeping as well in, in, uh, involved there. I bet this ball's made in Shanghai. I put, I put my money on that one. <laughs> Beijing there, uh, Brian, noticing they're not, they're not panicking about this early goal. You know, they're obviously very confident of their own ability. They're at home, and Guangdong obviously have taken great um, confidence from the early goal, but a, a very even, even game so far. Yao Chao Yung hits it, and uh, Murray Jones got the header, far side. Well, that's the sort of ball he'll be looking for. Big fella, English centre forward. Oh, my what, word. What happened there? Well... I didn't see that. I don't know whether you at home did. I suspect you didn't. I don't think the goalkeeper did either. <laughs> he certainly didn't. And, uh, well, they're all congratulating the number 14, Yao De Biao. And uh, the keeper looking a little bit forlorn. Well, just as I was giving uh, Beijing the, um, the usual take your time, no need to panic, all of a sudden Guangdong are 2-0 up. Well, they've had two opportunities. Well, call it three. Let's call the Murray Jones header opportunity uh, number two. But uh, when the third one came, dispatch with uh, clinical efficiency. Yes, the goals have been of the highest quality, really. You can't really blame the goalkeeper for them. One dog the away side, leading two goals to nothing. Garfan in possession. Trying to prompt some runs. They're pushing plenty of players up. Beijing handball, yes, uh, well spotted by the referee. Well, we're going to get a chance to see this goal. Well, it breaks nicely from here, Brian, and he just gets his head down and just thrashes it there, and it goes flying into that far corner. Uh, unstoppable goal, really. Yao De Biao. Well, he must have heard us about uh, keeping his head over the ball. Well, it, it's no coincidence that we've seen early on in the first 20 minutes at least half a dozen shots. So. Hopefully the World Cup has started to rub off on people that, you know, the old saying, if you don't take a shot, you don't buy a raffle ticket, you don't uh, win a prize. Well, I don't know whether this game is, could be called a bit of a lottery for uh, Guangdong at the moment. Uh, they look to be well in control. 2-0 the score. The first time these two met in this league, it ended 2-0, but with a scoreline the other way round. Then Du Ying just uh, lifting his uh, eye off the ball. What was that? Goal scorer, Yao Do Biao. Well, if it was, we'll forgive him for that slight lapse. It looks a nice little compact ground, isn't it? 22,000 seater stadium, but uh, the pitch looks a little bit narrower. But, yeah, it uh, does actually. It looks a bit tight. This is where Beijing may have a problem where they're trying to work their way through the middle and not working the flanks. We saw in the World Cup on a number of occasions the teams were unable to uh, change their strategy and style of play when teams were, were very comfortable at the back. Beijing will have to liven it up a little bit for me. They're, they're, they seem to be stuck in the same style of play and not really able to, to change gear. Murray Jones, well, I think you heard uh, his cry of anguish. Somebody just picked up, obviously, in China because um, he never used to do that in England. Where was that? Wouldn't have been allowed in uh, Grimsby and... Uh, <laughs> Brentford and Brentford. You were saying that. Well, we talk about him in his uh, passage of time at Brentford in a little while. But let's see. We're standing offside there. Well, the back line came up very smartly. 
trapped him offside. You're saying you, you were yourself at Brentford, uh, Tony, and he probably came, well, he did come after you left. That's right, one of the last ports of call there uh, in the UK for me, and um, I believe they spent a little bit of money on Murray Jones, but he was a little bit of a disappointment, and obviously with him being out here in China, uh, reflects on, his, um, on how his career has gone, with him still being a young man. A little bit of a hot temper, I gather, but uh, let's hope we don't see too many signs of that. Beijing. お林組にお勤めの東ま純子さんこの方が見ると年はこう見えます真っすごいそのお清さんこの方がイメージすると砂漠もこんなですあらま佐々木哲夫さんこの人の頭の中にはもう火星に住宅がありますジンと伊藤
to slightly overhit that to uh, push ball for square for Chen Da Ying. This is Yu Yi Shen. Beijing once again. Uh, Push back on the defence as Guangdong. Nice bit of skills out there on the flank. We've got a left foot shot coming in here. Goalkeeper has uh, not, I wouldn't have thought, filled his supporters or his back line with a great deal of confidence. Uh, in the handling there. Yeah, it's been everything that Guangdong have hit actually looks like it's going to go in. Could be one of those nights. Well, here come. Beijing, they've got one man inside, he's uh, flicked it on far side. And uh, away come Guangdong, Yi Chao Yang, the number 19. The ones that broke that up initially. Back come Beijing. Ka Zhang Dong is the number eight. He's getting through a lot of good work in midfield. Another ball in, but uh, that's run free, and the keeper has managed somehow to scramble back and get in possession. The whistle goes, and the keeper's obviously asking for advantage to be played. Well, there's a dangerous ball put in here. The keeper makes his mind up nice and early, which is great, but um, while the ball's in the air, he actually throws it back onto the seven, who's just unable to turn there and get a shot on target. But uh, I think the goalkeeper's complaining that he was fouled, but I, I beg to differ. I thought he was saying he's got the ball, he wanted to get off play advantage. But uh, either way, the uh, number seven, uh, Ji Fang, caught a bit of a nasty knock in the process. This is much better, this is Ga Fang. Little flick, played a 1 2. Early release down the right flank, but uh, the player there looking a little bit cumbersome to say the least. Well, we're going to have uh, substitution very early on. Uh, ben Lee Jun is the man to come off. Yeah, it's the number six, Jian Bing. Not sure if that's a tactical or an injury, Brian, but um, nevertheless, the coach obviously not happy with the way things are going and possibly installing another attacking midfield man or a striker there to liven things up. See here, this is for me where um, Beijing could, could be pressing a little more. They have to come out of their system and start to try and win the ball a little earlier from Guangdong or they're going to just run out of time. They're not pressing at all, are they? Very content just to sit back and hopefully wait for the Guangdong to give the ball away. But they've already got the two goals. Well, that one broke down. Well, now they're going to make monkeys out of us as they come through. No, plenty of support back in defence. Nicely played. Oh, very ambitious stuff from the defence, with the with the Ji Yushin being put under pressure there. But away comes uh, Guangdong. They're breaking very quickly. They got plenty of players up. Well, that one overhit for Murray Jones, but you better stay on side because this, they're not uh, finished yet with this move. Here comes uh, Li Yushan again. Well, that one runs. Won the corner there. Good work there from Li Yushin. To be fair, Guangdong look actually the more dangerous out the two sides. Beijing uh, having as much possession around the 18 yard box, but not really able to turn them into shots or crosses. I think this is where Murray Jones is helping out a little bit. They've got the option there of going long every now and again rather than have to work their way through the, the two teams. Zhu Yushin with the corner. trying to do, curl that one in just inside the uh, near post. Well, there, there are currently uh, 500 players uh, signed up for the initial league, uh, and I reckon uh, probably about 350 must be about the same stature as Ji Yushin. <laughs> Back. I'm just 
basket, you can hear the sort of the groundswell of disapproval. Now, this is Murray Jones. Once again, Travis to the deck. Yeah, he's doing well, Jones, because quite honestly, he can stay on his feet if he wants. You can see there, he's a big lad. And I think it would take a little bit more to knock him off than the uh, centre half is doing. But I can assure you, when he gets around that 18-yard box, I bet he's not falling around there when he's got a shot on. This is Yao Dup Yao, scorer of Guangdong's second goal. <laughs> Guangdong must be delighted with the way that Beijing's tactics are set out, Brian. They're actually. Um, you know, playing it, it's like a practice match pace at the moment for them. Well, this is another good run at pace, and uh, the defender trying to get a little bit too cute there. That was the number five, Luan. Luan Yijun. One of the problems that the most of the Asian sides have, they don't have the confidence to hold the, hold the line. In other words, stay a little further away from the goal. And what uh, Beijing are doing is sinking back too far. Well, that one's fallen very nicely. This is Gao Fan showing his pace down the flank. Ji Yushin trying to get uh, after him. And he finally, well, his patience was rewarded. His persistence was rewarded as uh, Gao Fang to tread on the ball. But, uh, good positive run, run from the Chinese international player, Yao yeah, Fang. Looks a very good player. Going to need a bit more of that, I think. Um, could do one or two of his teammates having that sort of injection of pace, just to trouble the uh, the Guangdong back five there, because, um, as I say, you know, pace, pace is the killer in the modern game today, and um, if you don't do things quickly, it doesn't cause defenders any problems. Uh, Ling Jia Jun bringing down the fullback Xi Cha Yang. Well, a bit of a hopeful ball out to the number seven Chi Fang. She's left knee quite heavily strapped. Not really what uh, you want to start the second half of the season after a bit of a season break. Nice play, calm play. Way offside by Murray Jones. Well, one of the few occasions that the, um, the Beijing side have actually stepped up and caught Murray Jones offside. Quite hot and steamy. In the Shenon Pang. Here's plenty of space. Oh, well, that's come all the way through. Offside, surely. Very quickly called. Yeah, linesman and referee between them sorted that one out. That happened very quickly. But a promising move. It looks as though you know, Yu Wei Peng has taken a bit of a knock on the ankle. But just look how this develops. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was offside a good, good, good couple of yards there, Brian. That's right. Well, that was a much better move, a lot, lot more pace about it. Yeah. But it proved that Guangdong, the defensive line, was alert as well. Will Marshall at the back. Step forward just at the right time. Very tired. Push. That area of challenge. Beijing coming forward. Develop this further, go on the left if they want. But those sort of long shots are not really going to serve much purpose. No. As we said earlier, the most important thing they've got to do is get them on target. Kashandong, here he comes. Just lines it up, takes his time, and um, just swings his leg at it really, rather than having the, the, the conviction to really have a good go at it. There was a challenge coming in. Kao Zheng Dong, who said he's one of the players that scored four goals for Beijing. Bent 
Tries it away up in the front line by Ning Jun. I think that was a shot. You'll say that was a crossfield pass to the right flank, well, changed the direction of play. I would as well. <laughs> better from Beijing. Played out themselves out of trouble well there. And they've got Gao Fang, who is going to keep that in play. Well, that could have turned nasty for the keeper. He's done well there, Gao Fang. He's got something out of nothing. And I think this is what Beijing have to do. Just change their game a little bit. They're too predictable at the moment. And to be honest, they look at, uh, out of the two sides, the one that seems to be suffering from the, uh, from the little rest that they've had. Gao Fang holding his wrist there. It's curled in, that was dangerous. Well, the keeper got a great touch. Well, there's plenty of us to uh, admire here this afternoon with the shooting. Some of the uh, build-up play may be a little bit to be desired, but quite honestly, once these two teams get round the 18-yard box, they're not afraid to have a go. Here we see a terrific effort again. And to be fair, this keeper looks the business today. Yeah, and that, you saw that curling in. I think that would have just crept in yeah, had I think the keeper not got a touch. I think you're right. Great save. Wu Chu Liang has been called into action a couple of times and he's proved to be a very good shot stopper. He had that one that uh, was quickly in low handball. Well, I suspect there was a bit of handball before he was eventually pulled down. Yes, Wu uh, Chu Liang. Well, he's, sorry, Brian, you start to wonder whether or not it's the goalkeeper at the other end that's having a poor game or whether it, there were terrific shots because this boy's had as much to deal with in terms of the, the ferocity and the, and the quality of the shooting, but he's dealt with them very, very well. I'd agree. Looks to be a good keeper, Wu Chu Liang. Wang Dong in no particular hurry to press forward. Once again, we see that Beijing not really interested in coming out and pressing the back line, or maybe because they think <laughs> that sort of thing's going to happen. Nudge in the back. Oh, as you find. Yago Piao. Taking his time. This is what annoys players. When a team are 2-0 down, frustration will start to creep into Beijing's game. Not evident at the moment, but uh, little things that the Guangdong players are doing do start to turn this game into a little bit of a niggly fouling game. Let's hope it keeps as it is, because it's been a very entertaining first half. It certainly has, and it was the little nudge on the back. The Biao cause the problems. Uh, Beijing with a chance to fire one in here. Well, the skipper uh, Wei Keqing has come into the line. So close. And the keeper did well there, even though maybe he thought that was beyond his reach. But the, the key is throw yourself over towards the far post. He's in the right place, he's ready. I think he had it, would have had it covered, but it uh, looked a little closer than it actually was, Brian, from that replay. Yeah, just about a metre wide. Kao Shandong. But they really do need a goal, Beijing, for their efforts. Um, I don't know whether Guangdong will let them have as many shots from um, outside the box in the second half. Good header back towards Kao Fang. And uh, just... Loses possession. There was enough of a challenge in from Lao Cha Yang to put him off. He needs a bit of support, Garfan. Yeah, he's, um, he's looks about the only one who has got a few uh, tricks up his sleeve and can unlock this Guangdong defence. And um, as we say, apart from a few shots from outside the box, um, Beijing seem to be struggling with ideas. Well, here's an idea from him. But there we see again, Brian, he's only one man in the box with five Guangdong defenders around him. That was Zhao Ning, big player. A little bit uh, slow to turn, but uh, really he would have been uh, doing wonders had he managed to fire that one on, the, on target, uh, as Tony said, surrounded by the defenders. I'd like to see them use the flanks a bit more. We saw in the World Cup that this is an area that some teams did struggle with, and it, uh, you know, it is, it is a profitable area to try and use. Guangdong uh, seemed to be using it more. Curled in, far side. Player coming in with a header. 
it was uh, Chen Duying. Well, just collision with the Beijing number 13, Lu Jun. たちの明日を生き抜くため服と車でできること金具品ビールは絞って作ります<笑> ね。あ、ちょっと。はい。美味しいとこだけ。1番絞り。偉いね。パンとか。投げ食べ。イエーイ。ハイメン食べ。すごいすごいすごいすごい。何それ。全速食べ。あ、俺一食食べ。うまく
looks to be in much better shape about Guangdong as they come come forward here. Yeah, they, they look to know what they're doing even there. They've got a, a man over. They know where people should be. OK, the odd loose ball that both sides have been guilty of. But in general, Guangdong have been well rewarded for their um, for their organisation. Yeah, they come out with a nice shape and it means that they can be economical with their runs. Beijing have had to put in seemingly a lot more effort for the positions that they take up. Murray Jones just being beaten by the bounce. You see here, Brian, we can see that Guangdong are actually already on the edge of their 18-yard box. So it means that Beijing have got some serious work to do. They'll allow them to have the ball round about the halfway line, but once it gets near that 18-yard box, that's where the high level of skill is required, and uh, it's just breaking down every now and again. Well, the tuck back by Gao Fan causing you a few problems. I think he was a bit unlucky, but uh, referees adopting the FIFA directive, uh, challenges from behind most uh, closely looked at. Well, here's a shot on the volley, straight at the keeper. Anywhere else, and that would have gone in, I think. Not a bad hit by Liu at all. I think we've also must have, we're talking about, we're criticising Beijing's uh, attacking player here. We, we're looking, he gets all of it, volleys it, terrific strike. Unfortunately, keeper in the right place again, he's having a terrific evening. But um, this man has got to uh, also take a lot of credit for the way the, uh, the score is still 2 0, because he's been outstanding. Guangdong, though, very happy to let that big space in the middle. And they give that to uh, Beijing. But uh, the reason is that they pull their men back in to shore up that sort of middle of the back line. The far side, Garfan. And uh, that would have been an own goal. I think that came <laughs> off the defender. <laughs> Once again, the keeper there looking very com confident and comfortable. Nothing nicer than when your goalkeeper's on form catching everything, everything sticking to him, and it just gives you that platform that you know sometimes when the keeper's on song that uh, it also affects the result. A lot of space down the left here for Wang Dong. Even more space for Ji Xin. That one straight at the keeper. Working back. You see how well they're getting back into that uh, midfield area. Is there. Terrific example. He's give the ball away, and all of a sudden, Beijing get the ball, in it and they're confronted with four midfield players. Well, Liu Shen is covering an awful lot of ground in midfield. He's had another fine game so far as we approach the half-time whistle. Guangdong will be happy to let this game uh, just fizzle out. Happy to take a two-goal platform in at half-time if they can hold on. And doing everything right at the moment. He said again, finds his support in midfield. They've got a couple of runners on. That's a pity that was hit high. Well, maybe pass of the ball. The man coming in over on the far side. That was Yao uh, de Here come Beijing, down the middle again. They seem to be lacking support. See the observation I can see at the moment. They're getting the ball forward, but constantly there's two or three Guangdong players always around the striker, and uh, Beijing either can't be bothered or haven't got the ability to get forward to support. Well, here's a great opportunity. Guangdong just wants the, uh, the clock to run out because they've played along the back line. Beijing so far have been quite happy to let uh, stay back and let them come at them. Now they don't need to. get the impression that uh, Garfang is the key, this is the man. And uh, he's obviously taking on board the responsibility, but shooting from that sort of range I don't think is going to help Beijing too much. Murray Jones just lays the ball back. Just get the feeling Beijing uh, just need a little slice of luck, a little maybe a penalty or a, 
a dodgy decision or, or somebody just an OG to break this uh, Guangdong grip hole at the moment and uh, they'll probably be looking forward to the to the whistle anyway to sort themselves out I think the coach has got to get a little bit of fire in one or two uh, players bellies and uh, come out and really have a go at this side Flick on header well there was a man coming up on uh, Murray James's shoulder but it's asking me a bit too much of it. Beijing over on the right flank. Xiaoning. He's got a couple of runners uh, down the right flank. He's picked him out. If the ball uh, bounces kindly for him, it does. And a complete miscue. I think he was trying to gain a corner for the deflection. Hanzhou making a bit of a hash of the the effort. Well, I can hear someone in the crowd giving a Forza Italia cry. Can't be a lone Italian supporting. Maybe he's supporting the team in blue. <laughs> well, they certainly haven't got a badge of playing for them, that's for sure. Beijing with another cross in. And that time wide of the target well that was Denley Jung the man who came on as a substitute for Jian Ping I think when we see Le Denley Jung will be very disappointed that's a free header inside the 18 yard box and the keeper not in the best positions try to guide it over his head there but uh, just getting it terribly wrong in the end and uh, just about summing up Beijing's first half to be honest just unable to, to coordinate their moves together and just get things right problem they found is that when they do get the ball on target uh, they've been well stopped by a very fine uh, goalkeeping display from Uchi Liang. This is Ling Shajun. Far side, Murray Jones has got, well he had a player behind him, I don't think uh, there's too much understanding between Murray Jones and Liu Shen. Beijing down the middle. Wei Keqing. Wei Keqing is an international midfielder. He's just, uh, I think, dropped out of first team selection for the national squad, 31 years of age. But you'd expect to put him to play a bit more of a dominant and creative role in midfield. Garfang trying things out on the far side now. Well, Beijing will keep pressing a goal back just before the half-time whistle they certainly do their cause a great deal of a great deal of good just stops up Zhaning on the far side very static the Beijing forwards looking at them there just off the ball the ball was put lofted into the air it was very obvious it could only go back across the goal but nobody anticipated nobody wanted to move just very uh, pedestrian there sometimes in that 18-yard box and really I think they have suffered from this little break that they've had they just need to sharpen up a little bit well we're into stoppage time now just glancing at the referee he's not looking at his watch Beijing come forward again Another good defensive header, Gao Fan. But he's just trying to pick that up on the volley, thinking about uh, hooking it over his shoulder. There we see again, classic example. Three players round Gao Fang and three in the box waiting for the cross. Referee saying yes, I can uh, see the watch. Not time yet. Well, the defender really has given it back to Beijing. This is Gao Fang. Garfin gets the cross, two players coming in at pace, the shot coming in rather too slowly. The Guangdong defence have been saved by the whistle at half-time. Well, the score at uh, half-time, terrific start from Yan Yanjun, the number 20, opening the score in the second minute, and this man, Ya De Biao, adding another and uh, really Guangdong thoroughly deserving their two-goal lead. It's a little bit more of an even contest as the first half wound on, but Guangdong always looks in control at the back.
in Beijing's Great Hall of the People. A partnership with marketing group IMG and Marlborough Cigarettes has enabled the Chinese Football Association to set up its first professional league. It's modelled on the J League in Japan with a long-term objective of making China world-class. We in the Chinese FA have a 10-year plan. Our men's team has to reach the top 16 in the world by 2002. That's a difficult aim, and we don't have much time. Yet I'm confident that by strict management and training, and by the establishment of a club system and a strong league, China will push out of Asia and become a world force. That determination to transform the game is for all to see in the remarkable fitness standards the Chinese FA have set the new league's players. Just days before the start of the season, every professional had to pass a series of tests. If they didn't, they couldn't play. Confronted with the possible loss of some of their key players, it was an anxious time for the coaches. Among the coaches was Yang Yimin, one of China's best ever players and now in charge of champions, Liao Ning. He used national athletics coach Ma Jun Ren to help his players get through the tests. I hope the physical tests can not only solve some physical problems, but also bring something spiritual to the football players, a way of refueling their spirits, morale and confidence. It was all too much for 42 of the 500 first division professionals who failed and weren't allowed to start the new season. The first ripples of the Chinese footballing revolution were felt in Sichuan province, an area inhabited by one in 40 of the world's population. The capital, Chengdu, hosted the biggest game of the league's first week with Sichuan against Liaoning, the champions from the north. The launch of the new league guaranteed even greater interest from home and abroad. これ私先日買ったんですけど、いいやないの。もう高沢はいいし、この肌触りもいいし。はい。これ言ったら何カーですか実はアメリカンオーストリッチバッグなんです。アメリカンオーストリッチバッグと言いますと。はい。この商品は
The Beijing women's youth team, we're looking at the best 17 and 18 year olds in the capital city, demonstrating what they can do. And of course, at the top of the tree comes the Beijing men's team, one of the best clubs in China, full of star players like Xi Fang. But uh, how does this talent emerge? How do the best young players in Beijing get the chance to rise to the top? Well, July in Beijing is hot and, uh, as you can see, very wet. And it's not the ideal time to start your footballing career, but that's precisely what the latest intake to the Sangao Club in the north of the city are doing. The rain can't stop these enthusiastic nine-year-olds enjoying their first day at the new club. Sangao is one of a number of clubs that give Beijing's youth a chance to play the world's most popular sport. Formed in 1987, Pupils up to the age of 16 come to play after school hours to practice, something they may only have seen on television. The club director is Li Yanjiang, a former player himself. Well, he's telling us that when the children arrive, they won't have played football, perhaps only a kick around at home, but uh, they really like the sport. And their coaches give them a chance to play properly to improve their abilities and to provide them with a gateway into the sport. Well, the youngsters start from the very beginning, learning the basic rules with the help of the lie of the coaches. Before they get a chance to kick a ball around, Sangal's graduates go on to play for Beijing. One of them, one of the girls, has even joined the national women's team. But it's not a unique club, though. They're only one amongst many, a source that uh, supplied one of the deepest wells of talent in China. Well, these proud parents could be watching their offspring take the first steps up a long ladder to success. Well, these is a, a roundup of the other scores uh, from uh, around. I can't believe that uh, that's half-time score between Liao Ning and Sichuan. Uh, Army and Jiang Xu uh, drawing uh, nil apiece. Guangzhou beating Shandong. Well, Shandong, one of the bottom sides, so they would be expected uh, to foul. I'm surprised that even got underway with all the rain they've had in southern China. Uh, the half-time score, there we are, half-time score between uh, Dalian and uh, Jilin. Jilin, the bottom side, uh, that's uh, pretty much as, as to be expected. And Sheng, Shanghai against the second from bottom side, Shenyang, that's uh, got a little bit of a later kickoff. That's kicking off in about 40 minutes. Welcome back to the Jeanantang Stadium in Beijing. I'm not sure that the crowd altogether happy is... Uh, let's go through the action here. This is... Uh, Beijing trying to break out, the defender getting in a spot of bother there and it was uh, Ling Xiaojun that puts in a great uh, crossfield ball. Well, I don't know, if, you know, we're looking at that there, the goalkeeper given no chance. We see here it breaks, breaks loose to him. I think he went for a shot here and he just scuffs it and the striker here just clips it. I mean, that's unstoppable really. I mean, that's a training ground goal that you dream about every day. Fantastic finish. Yeah, that one coming in from uh, Ling Jianzhong. And really that more or less set up uh, the way that the match was going to be set with Guangdong being very confident and compact in defence, allowing them to, to not have to push forward too much. And here we see again, the ball was pumped in, I think, here for Murray Jones. This is Li Chaoliang. Well, that was the, uh, the first header. That was uh, their second opportunity. It was 1-0 uh, at this stage. Murray Jones doing the right thing, heading the ball down at the uh, keeper's feet. And... Live action from the Shenong Tang Stadium. Murray Jones, Beijing, just knocking it to Ling Xiaojung, who opened the scoring in this match after only one and a half minutes of play. And uh, Guangdong, I'm sure, will hope for another whirlwind start. Guangdong, the away side, leading two goals to nothing. And a win here will move them up into third spot in the league. It's so close, uh, Beijing have a chance to move up into second position 
should they win. They need to score three times, though, if they're going to do that. We'll keep an eye open for substitutes for you. And I would think the Beijing coach, Tong Peng Zhong, will want to do something. And uh, it looks as though we're looking at the first of the subs there. The number 10 has been brought on at half-time. Yang Chen. Well, he won a corner there and obviously setting out how Beijing want this second half to go. As much pressure in that Guangdong half as possible and preferably get an early goal. Curled in by Gao Fang. And uh, once again, the Guangdong defence coming out uh, very quickly and a break on here for them. This is Chen Daying taking it all the way. Now he was level, he was on went outside the post well obviously the linesman thought that he wasn't level but uh, once again the number 23 G doing a lot of work I thought he was a bit unlucky myself there I mean we've been looking at the World Cup where the uh, strikers have been getting the benefit of the doubt when he did receive the ball he was uh, level but uh, nevertheless still 2-0 Beijing uh, have to be very careful here. Obviously, they want an early goal, they want to put pressure on, but we saw there the danger. If they do push forward in numbers too much, they will get caught on the break with this Guangdong side. Yeah, just a final word on that will tackle from behind. Not really too uh, ferocious on Cal. Of course, uh, level is now on. The benefit has swung with a rule change to the attackers. Murray Jones flicks up, flicks it forward. And once again, oh, there was a nasty challenge in from the back. But uh, the advantage being played. Murray Jones again, and a complete miscue. Uh, in any case, the player going down the left flank, Liu Yushan, straight offside. He was lucky he had straight offside because it was a horrible ball there from Murray, breaking down what would have been a potentially very good move. But uh, patience must also be the order of the day for Beijing. They've uh, shown in the first half that they have got the ability to create chances, and if um, the goalkeeper can um, not live up to the same standard that he was in the first half, I'm sure that Beijing will be back in this game. Well, we've got uh, a few uh, Hong Kong mercenaries on the, on the bench there, obviously helping out. Uh, Sammy Yu, who's uh, involved in uh, one of the clubs in Hong Kong, also obviously helping out, I suspect, with the Guangdong team. Yeah, my old team uh, boss at uh, the infamous Michelotti. And the Beijing midfielder trying to turn his man, Li Chaoyang, going down. Of course, uh, Guangdong and Guangzhou, both uh, neighbouring sides in uh, southern China. And, uh, taking a few leaves out of the, the books of the Hong Kong teams, which went uh, professional and uh, had overseas uh, professionals in. Well, they've been in for many years now. Tony Seeley, apparently one of them. Well, the first 15 minutes is going to be important for Beijing. I'd like to see them uh, move the ball around a bit quicker. We see here, once again, played at a very slow, methodical pace, which is allowing Guangdong to get behind the ball comfortably. Smart little touch from Li Yaozhan. Oh, a bit of a differential in size there. Zhao Ning, I think, pulled up for bullying. <laughs> well, I always feel sorry for the big lads here. I mean... Um, you know, he can't help it if he's six foot ten and uh, he gets tackled by a midget, but the uh, referee saw a bit different. Well, shoulder to shoulder, I mean, Lee Yuzhan went in with uh, a fair bit of conviction <laughs> and uh, poor old Xiao Ning just stayed his ground. <laughs> Actually, I'm not sorry, yeah, I think you're right. I feel sorry for the bigger players after the World Cup. You've got, uh, you can't feel sorry for the likes of the... Uh, Roberto and Romario can no, about absolutely. five foot four, five foot five. Yeah, tremendous. The Beijing pressing a bit better already, Brian. We see there there's something they didn't do in the first half, which is forcing errors. And they've won the ball back there with some good persistent closing down from 
front line. That's what they've got to do more of. Well, this is uh, enterprising stuff from Beijing again, if the man can get a turn on. A little bit uh, too tight from behind by Hei Wei Wen. The number 12. Well, the ta tackles have been thick and, thick and fair, to be honest, Brian. I haven't, uh, it hasn't reflected really that it's been quite a tough game. No yellow cards as yet, and a great position here for Beijing. Well, this is the angle that uh, they're looking at. The man with a good left foot uh, could do some damage here. I think curling around, there's a bit of a space to the left-hand post. And they've moved it over that side, come straight over. Three Beijing forwards coming in to pick up any loose stuff from the keeper. But Ao Chi Liang once again. You'd rather coming to him here. As you said, good, good setup here for a left footer, but not getting enough on it. Would have been better if he had a miss kicked it, because it probably would have fallen to the incoming strikers. Well, player there going down like Murray Jones, going down like a sack of potatoes, but Beijing, this is Gao Fang. Can he get on the right foot? Goes out wide, nips inside for the return. Really just a little bit too delicate, but Beijing had four players there, just uh, on and around the six-yard box. Sign of a, a great deal more commitment than they showed in the first half. Very late whistle. Murray Jones, the linesman over on the far side. I think it was the referee that made the call there. Well, I think Beijing have already tightened up at the back, Brian. We've seen uh, Guangdong in the first 10 minutes caught offside at least three times. I don't think they were caught offside once in the first half, so signs that Beijing are going to get their act together. Well, this is Garfang. He's beaten three players, and a right foot drive safely gathered by the keeper. Great bit of play. Well, we said in the first half, if anyone was going to put Beijing back on the right track, it was going to be Garfang, their international uh, midfield player. But uh, they've got to beat the keeper. Great player. Skips one tackle here. That could have been a bit nasty. Saw the other one coming in. Uh, we need another one anymore coming in for tackles. No, decides to march on forward. Just catches a bit of deflection there, which helped the keeper in the end. But uh, this looks as though it's going to be a much better second half performance from Beijing. Guangdong with a chance to attack in. You know, Ling Jiajun inside to Zhi Xin. Popped over wide to Li Yu Zhan. No, it's not, it's uh, Yao De Biao. Well, Murray Jones ducking in under that, still not dead. And that was just hit. Uh, well, it's always a good idea to try and drive those in. Yeah, I think um, you have got the option when you have got somebody like Jones in the side because, you know, even if you do miss hit one and it goes a little high, you know that the big fella's always going to be loitering at the back post. And um, we haven't seen too much of him going forward in some respects, but he's still a good option for the Guangdong side. Just had his uh, ankle tapped from behind there. That was Yu Wei Zhen. But I think that um, Guangdong will still find space against this Beijing side because as they push forward, the flanks will be left a little bit uh, a bit short there as people push forward to make up the numbers. We saw four Beijing players in the box early with that cross and um, if they're going to get a goal back, that's the sort of numbers they're going to have to get forward. Oh, nice interception there. That was looking uh, promising for Beijing. Hey, Wei Wen just nipped in with a touch. Kao Zhandong making the initial break down through the middle. This is Galfang. Look, he's pulled way back. He started that to a good run of his from that sort of position a little bit earlier. Here he is out on the left flank. Played most of the first half over on the right. Well, just to confuse us, we've got two people with wrist bandages now as that shot is driven in. You spot the difference, Tony. One's got his bandage on the right, the other one's on the left. That was a good spot, Brian, indeed. <laughs> I used to spend hours doing those on the planes. Spot the difference. But I think actually uh, Gao Fang is actually looking more as a left back, uh, attacking left back. They push, seem to push an extra forward um, up there to uh, make the numbers a bit better. And uh, Gao Fang seems to be better coming forward with the ball from deep rather than having his back to go. Well, 
Well, Beijing actually going to go and collect this ball if they want to take the corner. Taken by Kao Zhendong. Look at the movement over the far side, and the keeper with an arm outstretched just knocked it behind. That was Zhi Zhao Yong coming in. Good deep run. Poor judgment from the keeper. Now, if the striker had got his head to that, he would have been in where, where he was in no man's land. Getting away with everything at the moment, the goalkeeper. Any shot that's been shot at him, going straight into his arms, and anything either side of him, he's, he's got the ability at the moment to stop. So Beijing have really got their hands full. Need an early breakthrough. Murray Jones flicks on. But uh, Xi Chaoyong hanging back, playing as the uh, out and out sweeper. Well, that, was, uh, that wasn't shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> Whoa. Well, we've so solved that mystery. It's uh, Liu Jun, the man that's got the strapping on the right wrist. Gao <laughs> Fang, the one with the strapping on the left wrist. with the midfield here there's a drive uh, left foot the keeper once again I mean he didn't have to stop that but he just looked a little bit of a, a little bit of a panic there as it skidded through he does look nervous doesn't he Garfang. another one of those mazy runs Wei Cushing Nice touch inside. Wei Kuxing again tries to play his man in. The Guangdong back line. You see a couple of players uh, very deep. And this is the big number 14 again. Zhao Ning. And the penalty has been given. He's done great there, the forward. Got into the box. Held off his marker. <laughs> threw his marker off. Oh, mind you, he put a little bit in at the end there. Well, he made the most of that, and uh, very interestingly, Tony, it's the same confrontation. Li Yuzhan, the number seven, with the big number 14, Zhao Ning. We saw that a little bit earlier, where the number seven came off and got the decision. Yeah. But it's the, uh, the FIFA ruling, the challenge from behind is uh, very severely scrutinised now. And the keeper sent the wrong way, comfortably taken. Beijing right back in this game. Yeah, they needed that one, Brian, badly. As I said earlier, they needed a penalty or something, just a bit of stroke of luck, just to break this Guangdong back five. They look very comfortable. And uh, the keeper comfortably beaten there from 12 yards. A good penalty in the end, and uh, they always look good when the keeper goes the wrong way. But uh, just what this game needed and just what Beijing were desperate for. Well, Xi Fang, I made that, getting that uh, goal for Beijing. And there he is. Very comfortably taken. The quality of penalty taken, if you've been watching television over the last six weeks, has uh, been extraordinarily high. How many games did we go in the World Cup before somebody missed a penalty? I don't think there was one missed in, uh, not, not in open play, was not it? Not in open play. I think it was the Mexico game, if I remember rightly, when it all started in the, uh, all the extra times that they had. In Bulgaria. Well, Baggio missed the most famous penalty, but uh, no one's going to blame him for losing the World Cup for Italy. But uh, we're in uh, Beijing. World Cup's gone, and the very serious business of uh, the new Marlborough Professional League here in uh, China. The new departure, really fully professional. Twelve teams involved. Played 11 matches and then had a half-season break. Away we come with Yao Debiao, dispossessed. Beijing on a bit of a roll here.
Got to be very careful here now, Guangdong. This next 10 minutes, very vital that they keep their shape. Don't do anything silly. Already we see them coming out now, trying to get another goal. It's not really necessary. Beijing have found it very hard to break them down. If they keep playing the way they are, I'm sure they could hang on. He's got two options, a lovely ball through. Well, for once, you've got to give credit to the Beijing keeper. He went down very well. But what a lovely ball through to Lin Jun. ご <笑>スターリングシルバーでございます。シルバー純銀やね。純度が920号を使用なんです。ああ、すごい。しかもですね、大倉賞同平局の刻印になんです。文字盤をご覧ください。はい。中には天然ダイヤモンドが13隻も走られてるん
It's uh, self-explanatory. Well, that, that one's ended up in Tiananmen <laughs> Square. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think you're right. The referee does need a bit of praise, unless he does something a bit crazy near the end. Once again, just skying it there. We saw a classic example, head, up, head up above the ball, knee above the ball, everything, uh, and it more or less like a rugby kick rather than a soccer shot. Yeah, you think what, I suspect what he was trying to do was just hit it on the up to put a little bit of dip on yeah. it and a bit of curl. But... Uh, he could have done one of those uh, American footballs we were on about earlier. So Beijing now patiently building down through the middle again. Wei Kuxing. Well, he's caught. He's caught the bug. <laughs> well, we don't mind people shooting, but as we say, it would be nice to get them on target and see the keeper make a save. That's... Uh, that's a good thing from the coach's point of view. Once again, you know, just a rush of blood there, sees the goals, and, um, you know, it's a good sign when your players aren't afraid to shoot, but um, unfortunately not on target. Wei Keqing, the skipper of the side, as we said before, has been a regular fixture in the Chinese national team, played in the World Cup qualifiers. Just uh, eased himself out of position. The ball and there's a good uh, run from uh, deep positions well that time it was the number 13 Chi Minghan that went down and no foul wasted uh, ball in there from Beijing well a lot more encouraging performance from Beijing because as you've pointed out they are running forward now earlier on we did make the criticism that they weren't able to support each other and make runs beyond moving this Guangdong side about. As the game goes on, Guangdong will get tired and uh, that's when the mistakes will come and one or two errors will be forced upon them. And this is where Beijing, hopefully, their finishing will sharpen up. Guangdong side really have undergone a major clear-out uh, from uh, the previous year. The side that went through for the National Club Championship, got through to the last stages, have uh, really had to clear up. Wu Chun-Li is their most famous player. Uh, he's gone. In fact, only three of the team still in. One of their expatriates will be back in the next week's match, Craig Allardyce, currently sitting out to one match suspension for picking up yellow cards in two successive weeks. one very nearly went all the way through there was a Guangdong player completely unmarked sweeper playing very deep and uh, just the, the play came to him then didn't really had to move well, that's what we're saying they're gonna have to stop trying to work it through the middle and uh, try the flanks a little bit the sweep will eat them up all night yeah the Biao looked uh, like nimble on his feet there as he was trying to get himself space to shoot uh, said they'll have a chance to throw in a uh, throw in, not literally of course uh, put in a, a free kick now this may be a chance from Murray Jones to use his uh, aerial prowess far side well, Beijing really are guilty Brian and giving away an awful lot of silly little fouls around the 18 yard box but it doesn't really matter if they're going to take them like that Yeah, not the best uh, passage of play from Lee Chao Yang. But it is one criticism of Asian football in general. They must learn how to tackle a little more. Their enthusiasm and uh, commitment is, is second to none. But they must channel that into knowing when to hold away from a challenge and when the ball is available to be won. Sometimes they just go through carelessly and give away unnecessary and needless fouls. We saw that time after time with South Korea in the World Cup. But uh, they're getting better. Well, that one was broken down, offside against Murray Jones. Referee has been on the ball, been on the spot as well. Beijing getting their one goal from the penalty spot. In response to the two first half goals from Guangdong. This is Gao Fang. He's had uh, quiet five minutes. Chance to get his breath back. Let's see if he can get this one over no 
the man on the spot. The easy fan. Away come Guangdong at speed. This is Ji Yujin. Oh, and that so very nearly came to Murray Jones. Great run from him. Big fella doing tremendously well there, Brian. Unlucky. Just uh, standing on the ball there at the vital moment. That could have been four. Yeah, and there was another player behind him. So Guangdong broke very quickly. And uh, he has been uh, one of the best players on the field, this number 23, Zhi Yuxin. Yeah, I like him. He looks, um, he looks very comfortable and capable. Well, that one curled in for the number 14, Yao Da Biao. But given away. I'm just looking around for Murray Jones. He seems to have uh, gone missing. Well, Yao comes in. Don't, don't forget they have had a break some uh, the, most of the teams and um, you know this last 15 minutes we'll see just how much work they did put in during this break and uh, you know which side will be the fittest will possibly uh, swing which way this game goes. But Beijing looking a lot sharper now, a lot sprightlier on the ball and zipping it around a lot better. Nice little back heel. But there's really nowhere for them to go at the moment. Guan Dong have come back. Garfang nips around his man and very clumsily challenged. Yeah, it's going to take something like this um, Garfang to open up this Guan Dong defence. They're very well organised, as we said before. And here we see, just slips his marker there in the number 19, gets his body across him. Garfang there realising he's not going to get much else and goes down for the foul. Li Cha Yang. Well, that, I might even have uh, expected a yellow card on that one. so crowded uh, in that box and uh, Beijing don't really have any prowess in the air I say that uh, the, the tallest players there their fullback uh, Xi Chao Yong as that one uh, flies uh, wide over to the left you know the shooting's been as good as it's been bad we have complimented the shooting here we see classic example again just swinging his boot, hoping it goes in, rather than having a set, a set thing in his mind, you know, dig out the far post, look for the keeper to make a parry, or it goes in, and look for people to come in for the second ball. But they too tend to lash and get a bit excited around the 18-yard box. Yeah, that was Denley Jung who uh, came on as substitute. The ball was uh, bobbled just before he made contact with it. But it was... Uh, Bit of a result of a rush of blood to the head. Well, there's the score. The home side trailing 1 2. And Guan Dong, as I say, will move uh, up from uh, their mid table position. They're seventh at the moment. Uh, they will go up to third position. Climbing above Beijing, who are currently placed fourth. Always two men in attendance for Guangdong as Ling Jung takes it all the way over. Oh, and uh, you see Li Yuzhan is pointing back over the far side. That's criminal. You should never be offside from that position, Brian. You can see all of the play, you can see all of the players. And I mean, that's schoolboy error. That's just laziness. Yeah, Li Yuzhan. In fact, he was pointing over to Lu Jun over on the far side, who he claimed he was, was playing him on. Could be the first yellow, I think. No. Well, Gar Fang has uh, had a couple of those sort of challenges. He's got seven stitches in that wound in his wrist. Got it uh, yesterday. And uh, he's obviously favouring it a little bit. Uh, when he takes a tumble, he tries to keep that wrist well, uh, well off the ground. Now here's a chance for one to be curled in. Should have done a little better than that. A bit disappointed, obviously, going back there. He had a free header again. Just got to get it on target and hope that the keeper's out of position. Well, this was the man that we said was their, their looked to be their key at set plays. Xi Chao Yong. And uh, Guangdong taking their time. Why not? Yu Wei Feng. We've got a yellow card here. Well, the skipper was going to intervene. 
and then uh, decided uh, against it. Take the medicine and they get on with the play. Well, he's not the man that got the card. That's uh, Chi Ming Hang, the skipper. He's the one that uh, was going to protest. Down through the middle, too far. So, Wu Chuliang able to just take his time, pick it up. Well, there was no movement there from the back line. If they'd have got into uh, some sort of a position, uh, they may have been able to roll the ball out. Yeah, Be Beijing haven't really capitalised on that uh, bit of fortunate penalty that they had. And uh, Guangdong have, have got, uh, got to grips with them again and uh, picked their play up as well in midfield. And, uh, Beijing is uh, not struggling as such, but not finding it as easy as, um, as they were in the first half to break, break them down. Murray Jones just knocks it back, and that's an excellent ball if that stays in. Well, look at the space here over on the far side. And uh, Li Zhuzhan is oh, a slip. Li Zhuzhan had made a great run into the six-yard box. Lin Zhaojun it was that uh, fell over. Well, this is the man, Ya, yeah, not uh, Ya yeah, this is Zhao Ning. Well, if only he had found the far man there on the... There was a man over there, Beijing had two men over and he found the wrong one. Well, it was uh, Zhao Ming that uh, was in possession in the area when uh, he was challenged by Li Zhuzhan. That led to the penalty. Well, here's a free shot. Two Beijing players side by side on the edge of the six-yard box. And... Well, it wasn't a bad effort, but again, very quick reactions from the keeper. Guangdong Dong ball watching here, and once again, a good strike, but the keeper just in the right place for um, this Beijing side. Can't seem to get out of the way. I've noticed the last couple of attacks that uh, Guangdong either are getting tired or getting sloppy. They're uh, starting to let people pull away from them and leaving people in the box on a couple of occasions. If Beijing can punish them, we're in for a storming finish. This is Gao Fang taken over from Lu Jun. Lovely skill again from Gao Fang into the area. And he took it over. I was just almost holding my breath there. I was expecting a challenge to come flying in, yeah. but the defence did well. Yeah, the defence, you know, overall have done very, very well. They have uh, let Beijing have the odd moment, but the goalkeeper's been up to it. It's been, a, you know, a combination of poor finishing and great goalkeeping. This one hit... Uh, Long to the far post where Kao Zhandong was there. No, it wasn't. It was uh, Wei Kexing. You just feel if Beijing can just keep plugging away, they can get this equaliser. Well, we've had one yellow card for time-wasting. And I wouldn't uh, recommend that the Guangdong defender here takes too much time over this. Well, if they're a little bit smart, they'll stop him from taking the goal kicks because he'll end up getting sent off. Well, it's going to be another feature of uh, the league that uh, yellow cards in successive games result in a suspension. That's why Craig Allardyce is not on the field this week. One of the three overseas players uh, brought into the Guangdong side. That's the skipper. Well, I'm not sure. Well, I think he was trying to curl it inside the back, but the uh, the wide player was actually not wide enough. Well, they are a bit reluctant to go wide. They seem to be going wide when they're forced to go wide rather than uh, choosing it as an option. And uh, they'll keep persisting going down the middle. They may get a little bit of luck, but uh, they'll get more joy from the wings. Murray Jones was expecting another thump in the back from the Xi Chao Young there. It didn't come. Now push it square. There it goes to Xi Yuzhin. Now if they can keep possession. Well, I think that uh, Guangdong now realise that this game's well within their grasp. Three points are more than capable of uh, being had by them and they're going to uh, make sure that they keep what they've got. 
we saw Li Hongzhang warming up to come on. The attacking midfield player. Guangdong quite happy to stick with the 11 that are out on the field. Maybe they will bring a fresh uh, defender on for the closing minutes of this match. This is Ling Jiajun. Back to Yao De Biao. This is Chen Da Ying. Nice touch. Guangdong keeping possession well. Smart play all the way back. The pressure is on Beijing to come out and get the ball from them. Well, there's the sub warming up. Li Hongzhang, as I say, they've got to wait for the ball to go out of play before they can bring him on. They seem to be playing in little bursts, Beijing. They're having a little breather now, which really, you know, they should be pushing this Guangdong side right to the edge, hoping that uh, tiredness and uh, mistakes start to creep in. Off goes Yang Chan, who was actually the uh, substitute at half-time, so he didn't even get to, to play it through to the end. A little bit of uh, extra pace there for everyone to see. Well, the crowd obviously felt that uh, Li Chao Yang was uh, obstructing. And uh, the old fashioned uh, heave up upfield. Murray Jones following it all the way into the keeper. Now, this is a uh, play pulled a little bit wider. Position to knock it back in. They've got four players up in the area, Beijing. And uh, this is Garfang once again. Oh, a very athletic challenge. This is a suggestion of uh, feed up on it, though, but uh, the referee let it go. Playing plenty of advantage well again there, the referee. But uh, Beijing. Still persisting in going through the middle. There's up to five or six Guangdong defenders sitting in there waiting for little Maisie dribbles. OK, it looks spectacular, but there isn't an end result at the moment. Well, that one from Ji Jin just uh, trying to thread that through. He could have gone over the top there. Here's Kao Zhendong. Oh, that was uh, curling dangerously towards the Beijing attacker over on the far side. This is Ji Fang. Inside to Xianning. And just wide of the upright. And a great run by Gao Shandong. Very unlucky here. Knew what he was doing. Great ball. Waited for the run. Right weight. And really, that's a poor miss. I've got to put that down for a poor miss. I thought he was unlucky when I first saw it, but uh, looking at it again, he had time to pick his spot. And he just wasn't able to hit the target. But there again, let's give credit to the keeper. He must have closed his angles down again. Yeah, there wasn't a lot for Cal to aim at. He came out, he had uh, what I thought was the perfect position. ギリシャローマの時代に遡って本質から考え、こだわった。そして出来上がったのはこだわらないナチュラルな服。いつでもいつまでも着られる服。それがキングピンの服だ。このエレガンスシリーズと名付けたプリント柄は時代を超えていつ
それが本物の美しさと個性を生むジャムスワールドはキングピンの服の兄弟分1960年代にハワイで生まれたこの高級リゾートウェアをハリウッドのスターたちは街中で着こなしてしまう高い品質を維持しながら低価格であることこれもキングピンのテーマだ組み合わせを変え一枚をいく通りにも着回して経済性はさらにアップキングピンの服通販カタログの入手はフリーダイヤル 0120-557-999 まで。Makes you wonder if a Romario would have brought that down on his chest and、uh, half volleyed it into the net.、Uh, Tafferell may have been out flapping at it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll, leave it as, we'll leave it as it stands. 15 off. <laughs> Come on, you guys, have a go. Hey! Oh, Murray Jones has got a break now. Does he need to play it forward? He has. Well, this is the、uh, almost ever present、uh, Xi Jujin. Beijing come through. Right, so finally, a substitution to be made by Guangdong. A bit of extra pace needed.、Uh, Xi Jihua will provide that when he comes on. Oh, and that's a terrific run into the box and another good save, and this is the equaliser. Great play. The ball finally tucked home by the number 15, Deng Lujun. But what a great run into the box. Yeah, great, great skill again. Gets a terrific shot. Keeper's done fantastic again, you know. But there's a difference in this half. We've got two Beijing players in the box looking for the second ball. Great skill, slips it through his legs, smashes it first time. Keeper can only react, react parries it away. And there's the stri striker's classic position on the far post, picking up the bits. Love it. And that looked to me like Li Hongzheng that made the run, the man that's、uh, been on the field for about two minutes. If it was an inspired bit of. Substitution by the Beijing coach Tong Pengjun. Well, you felt that if Beijing could just get their shots on target and just get、uh, more positive runs around that box, that it, a goal was always likely to come. And as we said earlier, we've got a rousing finish now. And quite honestly, you must favour Beijing because Guangdong looked like they're wilting here. Xu Xiu has come on in place of Li Yushan. Very interesting to see whether Guangdong just try and hold on for their two points now. Well, we saw earlier, Brian, they actually did have a little three, four minute period there where they tried to take the sting out of the game. And、uh, it's a hard skill to do. You're asking 10, 11 people to keep the ball for a period of time. And、uh, quite honestly, they haven't got that ability right the way through the side. Yao De Biao being brought down very heavily. And、uh, we're staying on him in close up. I wonder whether the referee was tempted to come over with a yellow card. A very clumsy challenge, really. I think、uh, the Beijing player's reaction there was I hope he doesn't come and book me. And they're、uh, very fortunate not to get one there. The two number 14s together. Zhao Ning was the Beijing player that made the challenge. But the only good thing about that, Brian, is that when you look at the Beijing players now, we weren't seeing them challenging or、uh, pressuring this、uh, Guangdong side anywhere near the halfway line in the first 50 minutes of the game. But all of a sudden now they've got their, their backs up and they're flying. Five minutes of this match remaining. There's plenty of time for either side to break the deadlock. Now let's see if Guangdong. Push forward. Well, he who dares wins, and I think that、um, Beijing, really being the home side, would have to appease this crowd by going forward right for the 90 minutes, and、uh, they'll be able to walk round their、um, their rice shops tonight with a, a free beer in their hands without any、uh, fear of、um, reprisals from the home crowd. Over on the far side, a bit of a ricochet between the two Beijing defenders. Oh, and they've given the ball away at Guangdong. Just look how many red shirts are out there in that knot in the middle of the field. It's all a bit frantic now. A long ball that's going to hold up. The keeper has to come out of his area 
to try and clear his lines. He's got plenty of support uh, coming up from behind. Now here's a speedy run from Xi Yuxin. Good challenge. Xi Yuxin looks up to the referee, gets nothing. Play continues. Gao Fang, now he's going to run at the heart of the defence. A give and get. They're in the area again. And that looked like uh, Zhao Ning from Beijing. No, it wasn't. It was Wei Keqing coming up from the middle. The crowd uh, get back on their seats. Well, we've got a rousing finale to this match. Two goals apiece. Guangdong had the better of the first half, scoring twice. And Beijing have come right back. Chen Daying spreads the ball out wide to Ling Jun. Now, where's Murray Jones? The nodder inside! Well, he's been threatening to do that all afternoon, Murray Jones. It's the first time he's really been able to break away from his marker and get a real quality header in there for his oncoming striking partner to come in and just get his foot to it under pressure. But nevertheless, the pair of them between them still doing very well at this late stage in the game. Ji Yushin popping up all over the place to Guangdong. He'll be a very unlucky man if he ends up on the losing side. He's been a couple of excellent performances as uh, Beijing forward again. Knocked forward to Xia Ning. Xia Ning showing a bit of uh, nimbleness on his feet. He's a big man, well over six feet tall. And as we said, once you start attacking this Guangdong defence, as tiredness creeps in, the errors are starting to happen thick and fast. There's a challenge there. He just leaves his body there, the 14. He knows what he's doing, and he's more or less hoping that um, the referee isn't on his toes. But as we said earlier, the referee hasn't missed a trick all afternoon. These two 14s have had a couple of challenges together in the last 10 or 15 minutes. What an opportunity for Beijing. They haven't shown up till now much uh, invention or much quality from these set pieces. But maybe this is the one. The keeper in the right place. And just able to touch over Kao Zhendong's shot. Kao Zhendong there, just not able to get enough direction into that right hand corner that he was trying for. And quite honestly, you'd have to do a lot better with this goalkeeper. Good anticipation from the keeper as well as uh, counters the ball from Kao Shandong. Just uh, took off, he took one pace to his right to get himself in exactly the correct position. Yeah, he's been outstanding, Brian, for me. I think um, he'd be very disappointed that um, Guangdong haven't been able to defend. Not his goalkeeper hasn't been at fault, but they've given away a penalty there and some poor defending in the end stopped uh, what would have been a tremendous performance from this Guangdong side. Yeah, a little nudge by Kao Shandong. Well, I've been impressed by the keeper. The, the keeper, the referee. I've been impressed by the keeper as well, but uh, the referee, <laughs> the man with the whistle. Yeah, I think, um, I think you're absolutely spot on there because, obviously, one of the things from playing in Asia for the last few years is, is the poor quality sometimes of the referee, and, and quite honestly, this boy's been as good as anything we've seen in the last six weeks. Ida Curley, far side, Murray Jones just uh, having a little bit of a discussion with Xi Chao Yun as Beijing breaking. They've got two men in the middle here. The cross not delivered. Here comes Zhao Ning. Given away. Chen Dai Ying, although it's come straight back, is that offside? The whistle goes. It's a very unlucky decision there. Just looking at the watch, we're into time added on for stoppages. I think it would be very unfair if Guangdong actually got beat here today. I think they've played well enough during the 90 minutes to share the spoils with Beijing and uh, thankfully mainly to that goalkeeper. Well, I heard a long blast on the whistle. In fact, that is it. Well, it uh, was a great second half performance by Beijing to come back and make a real game of it. Exciting stuff as 
we got into the last period of play. But uh, from the penalty spot, Beijing pulled one back, and then uh, Deng Li Jung following up on a great run. Well, both sides acknowledging the support from the crowd who braved the uh, earlier rain. It uh, held off pretty much throughout the 90 minutes. Well, it took Beijing an hour, really, Brian, to come to life. We saw um, the latter half of that um, second half, really, the sort of form that has taken Beijing into the position that they are. And uh, we can see the problems, really, that Guangdong have got, quite honestly, that they scored two fantastic goals. But apart from that, they didn't really show too much in front of goal. Lots of work from Murray Jones up front, good enterprising runs from his co-striker. But in general, uh, not really showing the sort of enterprise in, in, in front of goal that they're going to need to win this league. Yeah, they've got to overtake some pretty good sides if they're going to go all the way. Uh, Dalian at the top, Shanghai in second place, uh, Sichuan uh, in third. But uh, one point apiece from this match for either side. The uh, Beijing fans, in the end, happy enough with their team's uh, second half performance. And who knows, they may have nicked it. Well, that's it. Uh, as this as this uh, league resumes for the second half from the Xionantang Stadium. For the moment, uh, goodbye.